evening and welcome to another extremely informative conversation right here on Health Check. It's on Hope TV. It's the only station where you look and live. My name is Kerry Kagiri and today's conversation is about a very important organ in our body. If you follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, you do know what we're talking about. So go ahead and get following at Hope TV KE. Also, shameless plug, follow me, Kerry Kagiri. As we do this conversation, we get to hang out with uh, three amazing people who have taken their time to ensure that you get informed. So how can you also join us? It's by sharing this link. If you're watching it on Facebook, go ahead and share it. If you're watching it on YouTube, leave a comment and share as well. I will start with a lady because yesterday was International Women's Day and the lady on set is... One of the most important people will be celebrating Mother's Day this uh, coming Sunday, as well as a lady who has chosen to challenge and do something that was super amazing. We have Mary Jerry Kiari, Karibu Sana. Asante Sana. Mary, you are a kidney donor. Yes, I am. Yes. So, are you living with one kidney? Yes, I live with one kidney since uh, 2002. Since the year 2002. Yes. And you look beautiful, you're glowing. Thanks to God. Amen, absolutely. Yeah. And your nail game is on point. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Thanks. God's got to get that manicure. <laughs> okay, even as we do that, we do have with me, just next to her, who is her son, David Kiare. Yes. And David, you are super, super exciting because, number one, Despite living with kidney failure, you have founded something super exciting called the Kidney Society Foundation. Yes, David, you. say hello to the viewers and tell us what you do at the Kidney Society Foundation. Um, kidney Society Foundation, oh, my name is David Kiari, son of Mary. <laughs> my mom. Yeah, uh, Kidney Society Foundation was founded because uh, we had so many people calling because... Um, I experienced, I was diagnosed in the year 2001. So we had a lot of people calling in like, w which doctor do you go to? What happens? Or, you know, people are devastated, they're traumatized, and you actually don't know what to do, you know? So that's how we just came up, because like, calls and calls every day, you know, mentoring people and talking to them. So I was like, why not open a kidney foundation where like um, it's a network to help people navigate through the condition. Wow. Yes. And we'll be going deeper with that because we're honored to have the head of the renal unit mm. at the Kenyatta National Hospital. He's a kidney specialist and he'll be telling us the other word for a kidney specialist. His name is Dr. John Gige Karibu Sana. And thank you for joining us. What is that other word that I have refused to say? Nephrologist. 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 Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's talk about this organ, the kidney, and we said that it looks like a bin. What are some of the functions that happen? And, and then we can try and understand what kidney failure is all about. Uh, thank you very much. And once again, thank you very much for having me here. Karibu. Um, kid, we have got two kidneys okay. in our bodies. Uh -huh. Usually the kidneys are at the back. I get amazed every time that when I ask someone to show me where the kidneys are. They do this. Yeah. I know. Kidneys at the back. Oops. Uh, protected very well by the ribs at the back, okay. the lower two ribs, uh -huh. which means that the kidneys are well hidden and protected by the body, wow. protected uh, against injury. But unfortunately, they are not deep enough. So if you get some injury to the back, like uh, say someone punches your back or stabs you with a little sharp thing, your kidneys can get injured. Oh. Well, that's one of the causes of kidney injury yeah. anyway. But by and large, these two beads, beans are very, very important. They are very crucial. And if I was to be asked, I would comfortably say that the kidneys are perhaps the most important organs, amazingly, wow. that we have in, in the body. When I say this, uh, it's because uh, kidneys do a lot of work. Uh, one of them, simply put, is to control the fluids we take, uh -huh. like this water. Yes. If you take water or any liquids for that matter, the body must take that, the enough it must take, and then beyond that, the kidney must regulate that water, and you must pass it out as urine. Mm -hmm. That's very important for fluid control. Mm -hmm. The other thing that the kidneys do is to control blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, the blood pressure we have, because we need a blood pressure, is regulated and controlled by the kidneys. Mm -hmm. So if your kidneys are sick, then you have problems of blood pressure, either very high blood pressure or very low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the kidneys also do help in making blood. Uh, when I say making blood, I mean 
that the hemoglobin or that cell, the, the structure in the red cell that transports oxygen through the body, is made what it is by the kidneys. When the kidneys are not working well, then you get anemia. So people come presenting to you with problems of lack, lack of blood. Then of course kidneys also make hormones. Hormones are those chemicals or proteins, if you like, that control the many functions we do in the body. Yeah, absolutely. So these are just some of the little things that yeah. the kidneys do and very, very crucial. Yeah. So when you get kidney failure, then these functions that the kidneys otherwise subserve are altered. Then you get kidney failure. Wow. Okay. So if you don't know, now you know how important the kidney is. Let's talk uh, to David and I'll start with your mom. What are the, some of the symptoms and the signs you noticed uh, in your son way back before he was diagnosed? Uh, it's lack of, uh, he was not urinating. Yeah. And then at times the pressure was high. And uh, we used to go for checkups and all that. And uh, lucky to our doctors, they noticed that very fast. And so immediately we started uh, uh, planning about the. Uh, uh, transplant yeah so when one is diagnosed by that don't wait uh, try to find the matching uh, like uh, the family member a sister brother or nephew uh, somebody from the family yeah. but at times it, it can also work with somebody out of the family yeah. but that's a long long process yeah so if, if you are good together with your family start it at home yeah with your siblings and that one can help and it can go fast okay. with the whole process, yes. Okay, before even we get there, I'm thinking, David, what are some of the struggles you had? Because you're a young man, how are you able to open up that this is not happening to your mother? Um, when, you, when, you, when you're diagnosed with um, kidney failure, like, uh, it's really difficult to, to, to get through life. Because yeah. actually what I, I have been advocating for is if we can have a social security for disability people like they channel us inside because I would kindly let our doctor help us with that because um, you can get a person who does dialysis like three times a week that's Monday Wednesday Friday so when you do your dialysis Tuesday Thursday and you can't work on Tuesday and Thursday and then half day mm -hmm. you know nobody will employ you so um, what can the government do? I currently have a, pro, uh, a friend who is, uh, he has neuro neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy. He can't, he can't work. Yeah. He doesn't have money for medicine. Yeah. And that's why we created this foundation. Okay. Before that, mm. as a young man, mm. uh, you know, I mean, uh, if I calculate your age, probably now you're 18. So in 2002, <laughs> you're probably not born. Anyway, I'm just trying to calculate, as a young person, yes. how did you explain the symptoms uh, to your mother? Because there's someone who is watching, and they're just seeing umtoto na jifanya, nini mbaya na umtoto, umtoto. You know, like, uh, we, we want to start from the bottom from before the even bottom, we get yes, to the policies, yes. because mm. we must get there, and that's the conversation we're going to have. But as a young man, mm. can you imagine back then, can you go to that day, that day. when you felt like, okay, I'm not able to pee. Mm. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what the signs are for blood pressure. Maybe you can just share with someone. Probably they can pick up the symptoms. Yeah, to be honest, um, uh, kidney failure is a silent killer. Okay. Like it just creeps on you. Okay. Like you're not aware. Okay. Like, like for me, I was, um, I was working in production. Yeah. Yeah, a, a producer yeah. by then. And so all that happened is I collapsed. And after I collapsed, I was in, um, I was in ICU. My mom can explain that better. Yeah. But I later came to learn about the symptoms and all that. Okay. Because my case was, was different. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Okay, yes. I get that. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I know I'm taking you to a dark place. Yeah. Dr. Tari, yes. people are watching. Who can be affected by kidney failure? Let's start with that. And then we start with how the symptoms look like. People of all age groups okay. can be affected by kidney failure, mm -hmm. all the way from the one at birth, because there are some conditions that children will be born with that puts them at risk or indeed to have kidney failure at birth, and going all the way to the most elderly person. Because 
the causes of kidney failure are as, are as diverse as the age groups that I've mentioned. And the most unique thing is the presentation and the symptoms are similar because it's the kidney failure per se that produces uh, those symptoms. Mm. So yes, everyone or anyone can get kidney failure. Yes. Let's talk about the symptoms. Again, it depends on how fast the disease has progressed. Okay. Uh, because sometimes you get kidney failure developing very, very fast. Yeah. But also, you can get kidney failure developing very slowly over time. Yes. Sometimes people don't even know they've got kidney failure mm. because it does develop so slowly until your body has gotten used to until yeah. one day it just crash, mm -hmm. like uh, Carrie said. Yes. If it develops very fast, then the symptoms will be very dramatic. Suddenly, you'll be swollen. Suddenly, you'll not pass urine. You'll be vomiting. You'll be toxic, so to say. And often you'll be admitted to the intensive care unit. So it's like you're having toxic shock inside you. Ka you're kind not of. able to. Y pass. Yes, yes. Okay. Particularly when it's due to an infection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there are these people whose kidney failure develops over months and years. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we call chronic kidney failure. Mm -hmm. Now those ones will just probably will just waste, just wasting away. Uh, you cannot eat. Uh, you are fatigued all the time. You are sleepy all the time. You are moldy. Uh, sometimes you even pass urine normally. Mm -hmm. eh? Uh, sometimes you don't have to be swollen, mm. but often or the commonest symptoms that you'll find that people identify with easily is the swelling of the body. Yeah. Swelling of the body, um, your blood pressure going up, mm. sometimes going low, low uh, are some of the uh, symptoms of kidney failure. Okay. Vomiting, yes. Yeah. Mm. So can someone just walk into the renal unit and say, check my kidneys, because then you don't know what to do. Would you encourage that? Because Kenyans, we go to hospital when we are sick. Sure. When it's ile, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, It is easy to say, it's, of course it's difficult, but you're entering into a field we call screening. Screening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not good to screen everyone mm -hmm. in the country because we cannot afford to. But we should be able to teach people to be screened if they are at risk. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain people who are at risk of getting kidney failure than others. Yes. I'll give you some examples. People who have got kidney disease, mm -hmm. people who have got hypertension, people who are obese, mm. people in whom in their family they have got a member who has had kidney disease, elderly people, people who have, got, who have been taking pain medication, <clears throat> like say drugs for gout, so to say, mm -hmm. are at risk of getting kidney failure. So these people are encouraged to come to healthcare providers and be screened. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. The conversation today is on kidneys and just the functions and everything that comes with it. We are blessed in studio to have Dr. John Gige, who is a kidney specialist and nephrologist. He's also the head of the renal unit at the Kenya International Hospital. With us is David Carey as well, who's living with kidney failure, but he's conquered it. And you can see he looks pretty healthy. Uh, he's a founder as well of the Kidney Society Foundation. Are you on Facebook, on social media? Yes, we have a, we have a page. Yeah. Page. Actually, it's Kidney Society Foundation PFI. Oh, Kidney yeah. Society Foundation PFI. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So one more time. Kidney Society Foundation okay. PFI. Okay. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. So check it out. Follow the page. Like it. Get on. And also with us is Mary and Jerry Kiaria, who is David's mom and a kidney donor. We've talked about the signs and symptoms. We've talked about some of the causes. Are there any causes we've left out? Because he said his was a special case. What would you tell us about his story? Wow. It's Going, a long one. <laughs> yes, but share it. Share part of it. Uh, what you it's can. a long one. Yeah. Uh, where we were much stressed is when uh, he wakes up with swollen feet. At times you could press. Is this after he collapsed? Uh, that, or before? That is after. After, okay. After. Okay. At times he sleeps. And then in the morning uh, he wakes up with swollen feet. Another important, very, very important thing is the diet. Yeah. I think we should talk more Absolutely. about about diet, what to eat, uh, get to know what you eat, follow the doctors, uh, what the doctor tells you. Don't touch this, don't eat this, but also feel your body, how it's functioning. Yeah. Because you can also doctor yourself. That's true. Because the doctor can say this and you don't follow true. the the rules, whereas it makes the kidney again 
you go back where you are. Absolutely. So uh, with the diet is very, very important. Very important. And yes. in every topic we talk about diet, every single time we sit in here, yes. that conversation matters. What you, what you eat is very, very important. important yes. Anything you'd like to share with us um, in terms of now the process? So your son is, is now, he, he collapses, he's now in yeah. ICU. Yeah. What happened? Um, I was not around. Uh -huh. I came from the airport to Aga Khan, yeah. ICU, direct. Then you can imagine oh, no. uh, how it was. Yeah. But God gave me strength because I was strong like Samson. Amen. And <laughs> to come and see your son in hospital, I mean, yes. you left him well. And uh, he was in coma for three days. Okay. So uh, most of the time I was uh, with him. So he uh, was striking his hands, and then the third day he started, uh, yeah, responding. Responding. Wow. And uh, that was something. Okay. I'll never forget. Oh, in my I'm life. so sorry, Mama. It was very difficult, but uh, my family was, they were very much helpful. And you yeah. can take a minute to thank them in that camera. Just yes. Tell them thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh -huh. to whoever was around us, whoever came to our rescue, whoever came to our help. And my dad was, he did, he, he did a very, he played a very big role, and he's up there, oh, and yeah, yeah. but I uh, always thank him for, for being there for us. Yes. Absolutely. Would you guys know by now what was the cause of your case? Because you've said there are many causes. Mine was hypertension. Hypertension. Being a young man, yeah. you know you drink, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so okay. that escalated to the... Okay. Yeah. Maybe Dr. Ari can go deeper into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, the commonest cause of hypertension in that age group, yes. like he was, is what we call uh, chronic glomerulonephritis. Uh -huh. What that simply means is that earlier on in life, he may have got an inflammation of the kidney mm -hmm. from an infection or whatever it is. And then being not noticed, it worsened. Yes. And then later on, he developed now hypertension and the kidneys failed. Yeah. That's the commonest. Oh. That age group. Okay, absolutely. You're welcome to ask all your questions on our text line triple two three two. We'll be opening the call line shortly. You can ask Mom any questions. You can ask David any questions. You can also ask uh, Dr. questions as we go here. We've talked about who is at the risk. How can we stop gradual loss of kidney function? Now, Mom has mentioned very clearly diet. Yes. Diet, diet, yes. diet, and I'll come to you because you seem yes. now you're a dietitian, urologist, <laughs> professional. Because yes. you can see this gentleman is a caretaker. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll come to that. Also, you'll tell us what you've changed about your lifestyle habits. Mm -hmm. But let's start with you, Doctor. Yes. What are some of the things we can do to ensure and uh, s slow down any risks? Uh, I think for me, uh, the most important thing that we must do is to prevent kidney disease from setting in yes, in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, having recognized the various causes, mm -hmm. then we avoid those causes, mm -hmm. that would be the best thing. But whatever we do, there are some people who are still going to get some form of kidney disease, mm -hmm. uh, be it people who have got diabetes, hypertension, or whatever. When you get kidney disease, and particularly when it's a chronic type, it is going to be progressive, whatever we do, and it's finally going to add to stage five, or what we call head stage kidney failure and you require either dialysis or kidney transplantation. This progression, like I said, is unstoppable. Mm. However, there are several things we can do to slow down that progression mm. so that people don't come flooding for dialysis or mm. for kidney transplantation mm. to give the system time. Now, one of the things we must do then is to make sure that we control diabetes. Mm. The sugar must be very controlled. Mm. We must then control so the hypertension that goes along with it. Make sure that our blood pressures are controlled to target. Mm. Then, like she said, make sure that the diet is as advised. Because there are some foods you'll take that will worsen kidney failure. Particularly, let's say, junk food, foods mm. that expose you to obesity are definitely going to worsen your kidney failure. When it comes to alcohol, if people must take alcohol, they should only take alcohol if they must do in moderation or small aliquots. Because if you take a lot of alcohol, it's going to worsen your blood pressure and you're going to get worse, then you're going to vomit at times, you're going to be dehydrated. How about just don't take alcohol? You're fine. Better still, yeah, but yes. <laughs> Better still, yes. I like that. Oh. And of course, about water. Avoid dehydration. Take as plenty of water, much of water as you can. 
But there are some people, unfortunately, who cannot take too much water. Mm. Because when you get kidney failure, like I put earlier, it regulates your water balance and mm -hmm. when the kidneys are failed, then you cannot pass water. Mm -hmm. So such persons are then advised to take water in restricted amount. So if you do these things, you'll be able to slow down mm -hmm. the progression of kidney failure. Yes. Absolutely. And how have you been living uh, now? Let's let's talk about that next step. So because I've tried to go I'm trying to get every part of your story. Mm -hmm. So you get out of coma. And now you start and you're told, okay, how did they break the news to you, first of all, that your kidneys had failed? Um, it took, but they took, it took a while, you yeah. know. It's like nobody came to me and told me you're diagnosed with this. Yeah. At, at that time, I was a bit brain dead. As you heard, I was in ICU as in yes. a coma. Yeah. So like, um, they really did a good job of my mom, the whole family, nobody came telling me this happened so they just let me you know get better get easy. better get yeah. better you know sometimes you would come my friends would come and we would just sit yeah not and even are they not asking each you other. what happened what's going on no no none okay. of that none uh -huh. of that so I, I we just tried to do the things that i usually do yeah yeah so you're watching a lot of movies because you're in production <laughs> yeah, more of cutting, chopping, yeah. you know. Or oh, editing? Yeah, awesome. music though. Oh, music? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so it was just those activities trying to remind myself of all this. You yeah. Know. yeah. Okay. Mm. So now you've been told, now you know what happened to you and mm. it's kidney failure. What are some of the adjustments uh, that were there in your life? And also, mom, you're welcome to chime in on this mm. one. Like, uh, to be honest, when you get kidney failure, it messes your confidence because you know you're not this person. Yeah. Your confidence is like kaput, yeah. you know? And then you, it's like uh, rediscovering yourself. Yeah. And um, it really takes time for you to be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. You know? That's true. Because, like, um, the suits you had, the clothes you had, they, they, they don't fit you no mm -hmm. more. So you have to, like, do everything new again uh, the it's doctor like tells starting you starting all over again starting all over again mm. you, you it's like a, um it's like a new I life. don't know it's crazy it's, it's <laughs> diet when it comes to yeah. the diet um you're told don't take the doctor advises you don't take this don't take this but then yeah, if you try yeah. again in the hospital you know wow. so taking food with limited salt you know sometimes you even have boiled food yeah and you know, it's because you're crazy. eating to live. You're not living to yeah, eat, right? Yeah, you know. So, <laughs> I I would say that um, it's a new life. Yeah. Yeah, like like it's it's a new life, Kabisa. Wow. Yeah. And totally. I thank God that you went through this because then there wouldn't be the foundation where other people can get support. You thank and God. Be, yes, we have to thank God. Let me tell you why, honestly. That I went through this. Listen, mm -hmm. no one else could have gotten into their skin and set up something like this. That was something that only you could do after the whole process. And that's why we say we go through tests so that we have a testimony. Amen. So out of this, you are a founder of something grand that many people will get support from. Support mm. is something you can't buy, you see? It's just mm. something that someone has to create. And that's why... To yeah. be honest, yeah. like, um, we do a lot of awareness. Yes. We, like... Um, we do a lot of awareness, like I do poetry for kidney awareness. Wow. And certain activities like that, visit children's home, talk to them, you know. Just trying to educate people that when you see these signs, mm -hmm. you should quickly run to Absolutely. a doctor, take mm -hmm. water, you know, boil your water, mm -hmm. uh, try these diets, you know, these foods actually help you with this, you know, so. Um, Don't take alcohol. And therapy. Yeah, yeah. And therapy a lot of helps therapy. a lot. Just, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, go to children's home and mm. play with those kids and all that. Yeah. So creating awareness uh, is really is really something. Absolutely. And I feel like um, kidney ki ki kidney failure has not been like has not been pronounced the way it should. Right. You know, because right. like everywhere you go, you go to NGOs, you go to the government. They only talk about AIDS, 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 AIDS. And I cancer. mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. uh, kidney failure is even, kidney failure is even, kidney and cancer is even bigger than this corona. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I oh. mean, if we find ways to create mass awareness, yeah. 
I think it, uh, a lot of people will be saved. Absolutely, and one way you can but do that is follow his page, check out the page, share it, share this video right now as we continue so that people can understand. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you for speaking that and we'll continue to talk about it. Mm -hmm. As we do that, you had mentioned other types of kidney. There are there like types of kidney? There's one you mentioned. Yes. Uh, can you mention a few more just uh, to enlighten us on that? Mm. Uh, basically, when you look at kidney failure or kidney disease, you divide it to two broad categories. Eh? There's acute kidney injury or kidney failure, and there's a chronic type. Okay. The acute kidney injury or kidney failure is one that happens within uh, days mm. and, and weeks, where you are well yesterday, then suddenly you have got kidney failure, mm. requiring dialysis mm. or stuff. Uh, and also remember, not every form of kidney disease or kidney failure requires dialysis. Okay. No. And in fact, in fact, yeah. only 15 to 20 percent of people with kidney failure particularly the acute, would require dialysis. Okay. Most of the kidney diseases can be treated without dialysis. Mm. Now, in the acute form, we have got people who have got loss of water, dehydration, diarrhea, vomiting, blood loss from injury and trauma. All those can get some form of kidney failure. Infections, malaria, name it. Now, when they do get kidney failure, it's acute. And if you manage the condition that has caused the kidney failure, then people are going to recover. Mm. Unfortunately, 85% will recover, 15% may not recover, mm. depending on the extent of the kidney failure, the acute, or how early it has been diagnosed. For those who don't recover, the 15%, they will then progress on to chronic kidney disease. Mm. Now, those ones now join now into the arenas of others who have got now diabetes, hypertension, some diseases, inborn diseases that progress on, uh, people who have been taking uh, drugs and all that, those now get now chronic kidney disease, which is now progressive and is not reversible. Mm. And there's no, very, very few people, miraculously, very few would recover. But often, people do not recover from chronic kidney failure and they progress on uh, to getting to edge stage. And we spend much more money on this chronic kidney disease management because it is recurrent mm. and people are hooked into it and they'll continue in there until they reach dialysis. Okay. So government spends a lot of money on, on, on the uh, chronic kidney disease. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's some names you said, like just, I'm a, it's too much information. Well, There's some <laughs> names you mentioned. There's one you mentioned. You guys are just throwing it right over us. Yes. What, what are some of those names, like labels for the various diseases? Um, well, there be perhaps to be too much information. Okay. Then, but there are other things like, say, for example, uh, what we call the nephrotic syndromes, yeah. various types of nephrotic syndromes, yeah. chronic glomerulonephritis, yeah. acute glomerulonephritis. Uh, there are so many okay. causes now. Okay. Yes, yes. And, the, and nef nephritis is actually inflammation. Inflammation. Infra okay. Inflammation of the kidneys, is what we call okay. nephritis. Okay. Yes. Okay, awesome. It's good to just know that so that when I hear it somewhere, at least mm. they know I do health okay. check. Okay. So I can be at least on point. <laughs> Absolutely. As we talk about this, uh, keep sending in your questions. We're going to be highlighting them one by one. Let's go back to you. And Dr. Ria, I want you to come in here because I know you've been seeing him sometimes. Yes, he's my and, friend and I've yes, for and, a long time. And we want to talk about having to do a transplant. Yes. So what happens? So he's in hospital, he's getting better. Mm -hmm. And then you're told the only way for your son to come out of hospital is through a transplant? What did they say? Um, yes, uh -huh. uh, we had to go through that, but I didn't have a second thought. I just said, let's do it. Just, we just do it. Because uh, this is your blood, you know? So uh, we had to go for checkups, which were very difficult, because some of the tests had to be, uh, have uh, our, what do you call them? Match. Uh, yeah, match. Had, match had to be uh, done in, in South Africa. Yeah. We didn't have them here. Wow. So we had to wait. And all this time is money, money, money. You get exhausted. You, you don't get tired. Never get tired and never give up. Wow. Because immediately you give up, then, yeah. Never ever gave up. And Let's talk about the matching because yes. that's something we don't understand. So yes. it's I, I I've been watching New Amsterdam. It's like a really good series. I tell you, you have to watch it. It's yeah. on Netflix. Okay. It's a really yeah. good series. It's about a hospital. Netflix, you say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's called New Amsterdam, <laughs> and they talk about all these things. And I'm like, is this real? Like people who are trying to be gotten like a match, yeah. and no one is seeming to match. So mm. different families have to exchange. Mm. So yes. I give your son. 
your son uh, your husband gives my mother and so they had like a whole chain of people like to mm. yes i explain to us why do people match what are some of the things that need, are needed to match just in general first of all uh I'm very happy for my friend Ken. Yes. He's an amazing guy. But oh. perhaps why he has he's what he is because of the social support. Yes. He has wonderful social support. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder how he has pulled all this. He's he's an amazing guy. Oh. Because central to kidney management is social support. Yes. Really. With okay. good social support, many people can hack on through. Absolutely. Like now, when you talk about matching, matching is core to kidney transplantation. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the best outcome. You try to get the kidney that matches best, such that the recipient gets the best kidney from the donor that matches him or his tissue. Mm -hmm. Why we do this is because when you get a kidney from a person, or whom we are calling now the donor, and it's put inside your body, your body has a natural way of wanting to reject it. Yes. It will reject it because it's foreign. And it will definitely reject it. And kidney rejections occur all times, even in people, who have got 100% match. Wow. However, we give people medication to stop this rejection okay. process. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you don't take medication and rejection medication in for one day, then the rejection process will happen. So for you to get therefore a good outcome, you must try to get people who are matched as closely related as close as possible and relatives you should have such a match okay and yes. mother and son is it also blood or it's mostly tissue no usually uh the blood group must be the same okay. or must be compatible blood group okay. compatible mm -hmm. then of course you go to the tissue yeah. which is now the kidney is resus anything to do that no resus okay. is not very important okay for kidney transplant. okay mm. that's so good and you're so blessed and your mom was like Thank you. immediately so you go to surgery it's a noble cause. Sorry? You oh. go into surgery? Yeah. Uh, and you have your mom's kidney? And, um, yeah, but uh, the, the test, they were like, by there I've had two kidney transplants. Okay. And, yeah, so um, the first kidney, we did the cross match uh, tissue typing, the, the, they did that, they sent to India, got them, then um, my mom organized and we flew to India. Okay. And uh, we were at uh, Apollo Sagar in Bangalore, mm -hmm. and that's why I got my first transplant. But to be honest, transplant you there's like a lot of tests that you need to do. But uh, having a perfect match, uh, things were not so. Yeah, they were not so bad as. Explain to someone who doesn't understand this. What are the? Why did you have to have two? Why did I have to have two? Because uh, at that time, that was back in 2000, and I was diagnosed in 2001. Yes. So I got my kidney in 2002. Yes. Yeah. Um, so why I have to is because we were getting medicine from India. They used to send. And my medicine delayed for a bit. Yeah. And at that time, I think medicine was expensive. It was about 75000 a month. Because wow. even dialysis itself was nine. close to well, not nine, nine, nine thousand. was was close to fifteen, almost twenty thousand when you calculate like the the, the fuel and the back and forth. Yeah, it was a bit expensive. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit expensive, mm -hmm. you know. So close to twenty thousand almost. Yeah, fifteen to twenty in those days. Eh? So medicine was really expensive, and plus uh, you had to. Uh, ask for this medicine and then uh, they fly it all over by either DHL, UPS, yeah. that's another expense, yeah. you know. So sometimes your medicine can be there, but um, at that time, you know, money issues, you don't have money to, yeah, you know, but uh, my, my, uh, my pills delayed, I missed my pills for a couple of days, so by the time they came, I had that uh, by creatinine. Went I'm up. so sorry about yep. that. Yeah, but now you're good. Yeah. And you're living positively. I'm on dialysis. You're on dialysis. Waiting for my third transplant. We're talking about <laughs> treatment now. And we're still coming to all your questions, but we'll be going on a short break right now. And then we'll be back. I will be back to talk about the treatment, and that's the dialysis and the rest of the procedures. I jumped the gun a little bit to the transplant because I was like, <laughs> Okay, this is very serious, you know, yes. uh, and you guys have made it through and we're really proud of you. Mm -hmm. You can also text in and give them your support and 
yeah, just tell them, you know, they've done really well on triple two, three, two. We're going on a break and we'll be back after this break. Have you ever wondered how to save your money? This is the question I'm asking these young people. How to invest and live the life you always desired? Coming soon on Spotlight, get to hear why Dhaka Gatumia. And with the cash that is, is left over, you purchase now income earning assets. The CEO of Syntonomy Limited, giving you the do's and don'ts of finances and wealth. When you find your purpose and your mission, no one has to check on you. All you have to do is get your notebooks and pens and get ready to be schooled. This month, join Edward Fury for a candid and captivating conversation. Join us every Sunday for unlimited uplifting powerful worship only on extended worship burudani safi kutoka wanamuziki wa nyimbo za sifa na ibada mahojiano ya moja kwa moja na mafunzo ya hali ya juu dhamira ya mtu ikifa anaweza fanya anything because kile kinanitofautisha na mbuzi ni dhamira there was this time niliambia Mungu mimi samahani Mungu lakini naona umenifanya mimi kuwa daraja oh sitaki lime Inu, lime inu. Ni mahali pa uchipuzi na ulezi wa vipaji. Oh. Mwimbaji anaweza itisha akitaka lakini wacha hiyo ni sauti sauti. Hajanunua. <laughs> eh hujanunua hiyo hiyo ni hiyo ni umebarikiwa nayo. So hiyo unaweza muupe ani aidha bure ama lakini <laughs> ipa nyingine sisi tupe invest ni investment tuone. Tunabeba mwili lakini mimi sikujua hii ni maagano nafanya. Ungana naye mwalimu Shaban Brima kila Ijumaa saa mbili jioni na marudio kila Jumamosi saa kumi jioni. Coronavirus COVID-19 is a respiratory virus spreading across the world. The infection is spread from droplets of coughing and sneezing of an infected person, touching or shaking hands or being in contact with contaminated surfaces or objects with the virus. The signs and symptoms are fever, coughing, headache, body ache, difficulty in breathing. The disease can be prevented by regularly washing hands with soap and running water. Avoid close contact with people who have flu-like symptoms. Avoid handshake, hugs and kissing. Also, protect yourself by covering your mouth or nose using a disposable tissue while coughing or sneezing. If you experience these symptoms and you had traveled or been in contact with a person from a country reporting COVID-19, you should isolate yourself for 14 days and seek immediate medical attention or report to the nearest health center. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. For accurate information on COVID-19, dial star 719 hash or call 719. Follow us on Twitter at MOH underscore Kenya at spokesperson GOK at WHO. Join John Carson every weekday as he takes us on a journey through the Bible. Whoever shall seek to save his life, if you go back to living for yourself, you're going to lose it. But whoever shall lose his life, give up his life for my sake, he shall preserve it. Enjoy interesting, knowledge-packed, 
yet simple teachings through his humor and in-depth understanding of God's Word. The last people that tried to put God in a box, literally, he rose again. He wouldn't stay in their compartment. If God was small enough for me to figure out, he wouldn't be big enough for me to worship. Tune in to Hope TV for John Cusson every 10 p.m., 4 a.m., and 10 a.m. weekdays on Hope TV, where you look and live. Thank you so much for choosing to watch Health Check. We are back and thank you for all your questions across our social media platforms. We love to engage with you and interact with you. Our call lines are now officially open even as we get into treatment. Today's conversation has been on the kidney and it's just a kidney health conversation and mostly gearing towards kidney failure. We have with us on my left Dr. John Gige and he did highlight that this week is kidney World, World kidney, kidney Day. Kidney. World Kidney Day. We're talking, we're talking about that right now, in fact. Let's just get straight into it. He's a kidney specialist, nephrologist. He's the head of the renal unit at KNH. Thank you so much. Thank Let's you. talk a little bit about World Kidney Day. Uh, thank you very much. Um, this show could not have come at a better time. Awesome. This is the Kidney Month. Uh -huh. March is the Kidney Month. And on the second Thursday of March every year, mm. the world celebrates World Kidney Day. Mm. So it's falling on Thursday. So the day after tomorrow, yeah. we have the World Kidney Day. What is the World Kidney Day? The World Kidney Day is a day that we uh, sit back and educate people on the many things that the kidney does, teach people or make them aware of kidney disease, teach them about prevention, indeed try to reduce the burden of kidney disease. Mm -hmm. There's always a theme, and the theme this year is living well with kidney disease. Oh. So like I said, he cannot have come at a better time. Absolutely. Like my brother here uh, says, yes. Living so, well with yes, kidney disease. Yes. We are looking at how we can try as much as we can to preserve kidneys to continue working. Yes. And for those kidneys that get sick, how to make them work. And for those kidneys that cannot now be helped, like for example, put required dialysis, how we can now repress them through dialysis and transplantation. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for that. And it's World Kidney Day this Thursday. So be sure to celebrate, uh, get to know more about your kidney, educate yourself. I want to highlight, educate your children, because yes. who will tell them about it? Yes. It's only the parents who can do that. But yes, happy World Kidney Day in advance to you guys. And uh, I know people who have just joined us are wondering, who do we have? So we have the founder of Kidney Society Foundation right here on my right, David Kiari. Thank you so much. He's living with kidney failure and he's doing well. He told me his age and I was like, there's no way. And he might decide to tell you or not. You know, for women, it's a personal thing. Oh, to watch it. To watch your story. Okay, fine. <laughs> you, you cannot. In fact, I dare you to guess on triple two, three, two. Guess how old this gentleman is. I'll just give yes or no and I'll give close answers. Close. <laughs> Allow me. Triple two, three, two. You, you, you cannot imagine. And next to him is his mother. And she has been a great support through and through. That's Mary Jerry Kiarie, uh, David's mom. Yes. And we are talking, and she's also a kidney donor. We yes. needed to highlight, we spoke about this over the break, about what it means to actually donate a kidney. Yes. If you're on medication, how you're living with one kidney? Yes. Tell yes. us about that. Um, um, I've li uh, after the OP operation, uh, I took the medicine just for a month. And then I uh, was going through uh, checkups after that. And uh, after that, the doctor says, I don't need not one tablet. I was good to go. Up and to that's today. how many years ago? Wow. 20. 20 years 20 now. years ago. Yes, 20 years. Wow. I'm good. That yes. is actually yes. amazing. Strong like Samson. Strong like yes. Samson. You are, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And when yes. we were talking about that, we were to talk about some of the requirements that yeah. come to be a kidney donor. And you can just highlight for anyone who's watching. Mm. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, for you to be a kidney donor, there are several things that we say you must have. One, you must not have any disease that we know of, let me put it like that. Importantly, you must not have a disease that can be transferred to the recipients. Okay. 
you must be as fit as you can be. Can you highlight some of the diseases? Like you must not have diabetes, okay. you must not have hypertension, you must not have infections as it were. There's some of the commonest diseases. Okay. Then you must not be obese. We try to re advise people not to be obese when they want to be donors. Dr. Ari, you talked about obesity and I have this serious thing. The, the BMI check for Ke Kenyans, Africans. Is there one that's being made because we can't, com we can't use a BMI check for Americans? Because of our body mass, our bones, our mm. everything's a bit different. Is there something being done about yes, that? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, it's standardized. Uh, whether we're Americans or South Africans or Kenyans, we're standardized. We don't. We discourage people with a BMI of over 35 not okay. to donate. That's right. So you try anyone between 30 and 35. We we are we shy away from 35. We won't take. We want you to have uh, an acceptable BMI. Okay. Because people who are obese have got a risk, an inherent risk of getting kidney disease in future. Mm. then uh, you must also psychologically be prepared for that. Mm. You must not uh, have, like I said, hypertension, diabetes, you must not be obese, you must be psychologically prepared. Those are some of the things. Then, of course, the blood group must, must be compatible. Okay. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. At least you know some of the things uh, to highlight there. You must there. not have renal stones, also. you must not have stones. Inside. Let's talk about yeah. that. In fact, the question on triple two three two. we are coming to treatment, we are still going to treatment, and I just want to, be, uh, to, to give you a heads up, David, we are going to start with you. Yeah. So you're going to tell us about your treatment process, and then Dr. Ari will continue, and Mom will also uh, chime in on that. Someone texts in on triple two three two. thank you for watching. They're saying, please ask Dr. Tari, what causes kidney stones? Is it? Okay. Um, and what are even kidney stones? Yes. Uh, kidney stones are stones. They are really stones. They are physical stones that you would see. Just like you also have gallbladder stones. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are some people who form stones in the urinary system. Those stones can either be in the kidney itself or they can flow out from the kidney and can follow the collecting system. They can move to the ureter they can come to the bladder and they can come out. Now we get worried about kidney stones because of the problems they can cause to the kidney system, mm. the renal system. Mm. These stones, if they are deposited to the kidney inside, they can block the kidney passage mm. and then you get kidney failure. Mm. Now it's becoming a common problem because kidney stones usually will come in from what we normally eat and drink, the composition of what you eat and drink. Mm. Because these kidney stones, some of them are made up of calcium, if you have got too much calcium. Some of them are made up of uric acid, if you have got too much uric acid. Some of them are made up of this combination. Mm. So if you then have got, or you take food or uh, substances rich in these things, you are likely to form kidney stones. Mm. But central to kidney stones formation is dehydration. Okay. So people who do not take a lot of water are likely Continue. to get into trouble with kidney stones, particularly if they have got enzyme systems because it can also be a metabolic problem if you've got a metabolic problem an enzyme system problem that con that causes you to form kidney stones and then you don't take take water mm. yes wow thank you for highlighting that as another uh, cause for our conversation this evening Thank you. Keep bringing your questions in on triple two three two. The call line is open, and now we're talking about treatment of kidney failure. What does this look like? So you you had your kidney transplant, yeah. got onto various medications. What other things did you have to go through as a matter of treatment? Uh, well, again, we go back to the diet because the diet is premium, is paramount, mm -hmm. it's everything, you know. So diet was one. Then. Um, I would like to take it off medicine, Kidogo, yes. and go back to self. Okay. So um, I think it's a self uh, decision you make and uh, you give yourself hope and you tell yourself that I can do this and you stray away from all these things that you're being told not to do. Keep off alcohol, just have a positive mindset, you know. Actually, like every time if you can say positive, 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 whenever funny thoughts come in, you know, so it's all about living positive and accepting and accepting. I remember there's a lady who we dialyzed together and she was looking like, oh, she was gone. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, David, Sasa, Lupus, yes, you would. Hey, I told her, to be honest, eh, just when you go home, just take five minutes, go talk to God. Mm -hmm. Just five minutes, mm -hmm. talk to God. And whatever he tells you, say Matusa. Mm. 
um, the wow. next uh, next dialysis the next time I saw her she was really positive I mean get weight because I told her two things talk to God now make sure na cooler mm -hmm. and uh, really she's changed you know so it's it's all about the mindset you know wow. it's all about the mindset mm -hmm. yeah. how do you change your mindset because I know you know this is like bordering a conversation of depression because you talked about thoughts yes. coming into your mind yeah. yes to be honest um kidney failure has a lot of all this anxiety tendencies also like um, you get all these thoughts of depression uh, they, they just it's just it's it's a, it's a dark place yeah. you know it's a dark place and to be honest if you don't have a good support system yeah if you don't have a good support system like I would like to thank um, Nairobi West Hospital, mm -hmm. the nurses. Mm -hmm. We have a vibe over there. When you mm -hmm. just check in, it's a vibe, you yeah. know. So whatever problems you had, Yanni, they, they don't exist, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. it's because of the support system yeah. you have around Absolutely. you. When you go home, you create also that sort of space, you know, just be at peace and just be happy you know mm. for me it's for me i guess it's not more of the medication mm -hmm. so you take your hypertensive medication and all that and have a good diet but more to say just be at peace with yourself mm -hmm. and accept absolutely yeah. wow it takes a lot mm. treatment what are some of the treatments that you had to support him and i know you are a great support emotionally financially many other ways what are some of the things you had to do for him to continue getting better before we get to you, Dr. Um, uh, I'll say the first thing, um, he used to live far, mm -hmm. so I brought him back home. You have so to. So we live close to, to one another. Mm -hmm. At times he surprised me, oh, mom, we have breakfast together. You know? So we start a good morning, yeah. jovial, and then I ask him about his plans for he schedule for that day. At times we walk together. We do so much together when he's not going for dialysis. And spending time with your loved one, that helps a lot. And it keeps life going. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. So that community is so important. And mothers are really the best. Sino mm -hmm. fathers. I love I love you, Dad. <laughs> okay. I'm listening. I know I saw that. <laughs> Let's talk about treatment, Doctor. You can break it down now properly. What are some of the treatment uh, options? And you, you had highlighted them earlier for someone who's just joining, okay. and also just the entire process. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, uh, the treatment of kidney failure is divided into we've we divided into various uh, sections. Mm -hmm. One, we look at treatment aimed at identifying or treating the cause of the kidney disease. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important thing. If you can be able to treat what has caused the kidney failure, then often than not, the kidney will recover. So you remove the stones? If it's the stones, you remove the stones. If it's dehydration, you sort out dehydration. If it's bleeding, you sort out the bleeding. If it's infection like malaria, say for example, you treat that. Yeah. If that's the cause of the kidney failure, the kidney failure will recover mm -hmm. in 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then the next cause of action is to treat the complications that emanate from kidney failure. Mm -hmm. And this is particularly important for patients who have got chronic kidney disease, which is now subdivided into stages, mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, and five. Patients in stage one and two hardly have any problem. Mm -hmm. And they are the many people you see and they do not know that they've got kidney problem. They are the ones we are actually saying we should screen mm -hmm. so that we prevent them from advancing to later stages. From stage three going to four and five, now people start presenting now with complications and with the symptoms and those ones then you treat mm -hmm. if it's anemia you correct the anemia we discourage blood transfusion particularly for young people who will later on go for transplantation mm -hmm. we encourage people getting erythropoietin these are hormones which are synthetically made in the lab that people get injected every other time they go for dialysis because anemia is a very common complication of kidney failure and indeed anemia is what makes people feel very very sick and mm -hmm. very unwell so you treat that. People also get bone disease. It's, sometimes you get people who have got kidney failure getting bone pains, getting fractures, and, and 
getting muscle aches, all this due to bone problems. Mm. So you treat that by giving vitamin D, for example, you give calcium supplements, you reduce phosphates, again, either through medication or through diet. Mm -hmm. So you treat those conditions. Now, and of course, dialysis now comes in. If you see how... what dialysis is. Let's not assume everybody knows. Yes, dialysis is a way in which you cleanse off the blood from the toxic wastes that you get from what we drink and eat. Okay. It is like giving the body an alternative artificial kidney. Mm. Because indeed, that is what dialysis is. Mm. So the blood must move from the body through uh, tubes and must go to the machine, must be pulled through uh, pump, pumps, mm. and must be cleansed off the toxic waste, which must be left on the machine. Then the clean blood now comes to the body. And that happens regularly so it's your own blood that's coming back into your own body. yes cleaned okay yes mm -hmm. uh, yes okay so that's the that's dialysis okay yes and this one in people who have got end stage kidney failure those ones require dialysis to maintain their life for good mm. and these are the ones who when they are transplantable we encourage instead of moving on to continue dialysis we encourage them for kidney transplantation mm -hmm. yes okay so kidney transplantation now is the ultimate? Kidney transplantation is the ultimate treatment for kidney failure. After you get transplant, can you stop dialysis? Yes. After you get transplant for end stage kidney disease, you stop dialysis and you read a near normal life, like 100%. And okay. you're as good as any person out there. Okay. So why, okay, can you explain then what's going on with your treatment? Oh, my, my, my treatment is super. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm really blessed because I, I usually don't have the problems that I see my partners getting, you know. I don't, um, I don't experience those things. I don't know if I always ask God, is it because I take walks? Is what are some of the things? Can you, you can freely talk. These are health shows, don't worry. No, I mean like she mentioned, like uh, the the bo the the bone the breaking, bone the uh, bones breaking. You get person on yeah deficiency, uh -huh. person on wheelchair. Yeah. So uh, okay. my other friend just kind of got blind for some time. Yeah. Okay. You know, get it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 with dialysis, there's just a couple of uh, complications, you know, and they always ask me, how come you don't get this? Wow. You know. Okay. So um, I just tell them it's good and yeah. I, I listen to the doctor, yeah. you know. Yeah. So if they went and, like, I asked them, well, look, like when I see somebody who has gone off, he's looking a bit off, I always ask him, umefanya nini? Umefanya nini? Yeah. You know, yeah. like umekula avocado. Yeah. <laughs> and to be honest, they always confess, oh. like I, I took a lot of meat that I shouldn't oh, have. No. I, I, I took bananas, banana, uh -huh. uh -huh. potatoes, potato. and yeah. that, that matoke. Oh, matoke. matoke. Yeah, I took some matoke yeah. and all that. So oh. I asked why, you know, yeah. you know, so me I stray away from those things. So, Good stuff. Yeah. Let me just ask, so you said you're going in for another transplant? Yes. Tell us about that. Oh, so uh, my... Um, my first kidney transplant was in 2002, yes. which was done in uh, Bangalore, mm -hmm. Apollo Sagar, mm -hmm. Sindhya. And then um, after some time, now when my pills delayed and all that, eh, um, my creatinine rose and I had these complications. Yeah. So we did a biopsy, my kidney failed. Yeah, they couldn't save it. Mm -hmm. So uh, immediately, uh, my uncle jumped in. Mm -hmm. My uncle, who is the brother, mm -hmm. he jumped in and was like, hey, I can't allow you to go through this dialysis thing, you know. So um, imagine that was that was 2009. So you lived with mom's kidney for seven years? For seven years, yeah. yeah. yeah? And imagine, like, in 2009, that October, by January 2010, yeah. 
uh, by by ja by January 2010, I had another kidney. Wow! So I mean, um, that was really a miracle. That was a, a real mir yeah. miracle, to yeah. be honest, yeah. because right now, like, it's really hard to find a kidney, mm. and um, that kidney lasted from 2010 until 2016. Yeah. Yeah, my creatinine again rose. I had an imbalance, so. Um, yeah, I think it could have been saved, but um, at that time I was living near Avenue Hospital. So by the time I went to Avenue, they didn't have a dialysis center, any, so they had to bring me to Nairobi West Hospital. Uh, so by then, I, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. That's mm. fine. So right now you're doing dialysis, and later yes. you can explain to me what's going on with him, because he's here with us. and. I hope mm. you don't mind. No, I don't. Okay, sure. First of all, he's a great guy. He is. He's amazing. We have established David. He's a strong guy. And I wish patients, many patients who are going through dialysis, would have uh, such a positive mind. Attitude, yeah, absolutely. Because it is what pushes many, and that's what our prayer would be, that people should be strong. Mm. And it comes through support. Mm. Mm. And like he has said, uh, much of his problem is due to anemia, lack of blood. Yeah. And of course, he's getting support on that. Mm -hmm. And all the other complications that come with, with kidney failure. So if he can get a kidney pr transplant, then he'll be good to, to yeah. go. Okay. But look at him. If you saw him in the streets, you wouldn't I say know, that. At he's all. I was yes. like, wait, what? Yeah. I was even trying to watch uh, the, the work, but absolutely a positive mind and, and a very positive disciplined. Heart. Very disciplined. Yeah, and you're encouraging others. And I think that's a big thing. That means a lot. <laughs> He's your fan. He's your number one fan. Hey, you don't know. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> awesome. As we continue with this, we're talking about the kidney. What an important organ. And mom is living now with one kidney. She's mm. healthy. Mm. Yes. She's doing very well. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you're doing to take care of yourself? I do, um, I walk a lot. Yeah. And uh, I love walking. I avoid jogging fast. Yeah. Because, yeah. Nahema uh Kidogo. -huh. So that's the only thing. Yeah, but not that much. So yeah. I reduce, um, I, I can walk from here to, I don't know, Kawangwari maybe. Wow. I it's walk. That's like 20 kilometers. I it? do. Uh -huh. Yes, I love walks and um, and I also watch uh, the diet. Mm -hmm. Actually, we eat more or less the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, so, yeah. You eat well, you eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to say this because I'm happy. I walked to town today. I almost walked back, but time. So <laughs> I walk a lot. I, 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 I can't compete with you. You're definitely uh, very healthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all your questions and your comments. I'm having a small internet uh, issue, so I can't get to your Facebook and uh, your text, but we'll be going ahead to check them out as we continue and we're about to wrap up this particular episode. What you can do is you can call in live. We're looking forward to hearing from you. The number is right below the screen and you can go ahead and just call in and ask all the questions you might have concerning kidney uh, and, you know, looking at this conversation. We're talking... Okay, let's go ahead and pick up this phone call. Good evening and welcome to Health Check. Hello, how are you? I'm uh, fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, my name is Stanley and I have a question. Yes, Stanley. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Kilimani. Okay, karibu sana. Yeah, my question is, mm -hmm. is kidney disease genetically transmitted? For example, is someone in your family? Uh-huh. Okay. Did you hear the question? Yes, I had the question. Sure, you can go ahead and respond. Yeah. Yes, there's a very strong hereditary basis for kidney disease. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are saying often, people who have gotten kidney disease in the family are likely also to get kidney disease in the same family. And uh, several genes have been identified through research that put people at risk of getting kidney disease. Yes, there's a very strong hereditary basis for kidney disease, and we work out towards identifying such so that we can advise people accordingly, especially when it comes for matters related to transplantation. Absolutely. Thank you for that, and thank you for that question. So if you are, uh, we talked about some of the things we highlighted were diabetes. We highlighted if you're hypertensive, yes. it's very, very important. If yes. you have family history, it's very, very important to get it. And maybe you just joined us. Many people, I think, they just joined after the break. We always get that. Can you just highlight one more time the correlation between diabetes, hypertension, kidney failure? Thank you very much. Uh, when you're a diabetic, and we have done, a, a lot of work has been done on type 1 diabetes, but even type 2 diabetes. Mm. When you have got diabetes and you have lived diabetes for 10, 15 years, mm. many people will have some form of kidney disease. Mm. 
and usually by the time you get that kidney disease, often hypertension will come in. Mm -hmm. So simply put, diabetes often leads to hypertension, both of which now come in to damage your kidneys. So by preventing or by controlling your sugar, by making sure that your blood pressure is fine, yes. you are a step away from kidney disease. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. We have another phone call. Thank you for calling Health Check. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, who are we talking to? You are talking to us. Where are you? Yes, where are you? Well, I'm at Kikuyu. Okay, ask your question, please. Well, I was about to ask you a question. Yes. And uh, I was asking this. Uh, you said that alcohol, does it affect kidney failure? Absolutely, and we'll be responding to you right now. Thank you. What is your name, sir? Alex. Alex calling. Okay, thank you so much. Alex from Kikuyu, he's just highlighting does alcohol affect kidney failure? I want us to say together. One, two, three, go. Alcohol. What do you yes say? Yes or no? Does alcohol yes. affect yes, kidney yes, failure? Yes, yes. 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 And you can tell him how. We can start with you and then Dr. Ari yes. will wrap it up. Uh, alcohol escalated my hypertension. Yeah. That's all I can say. So it was yeah. a... And you can explain what it is, what, what the hypertension is for someone who's just watching, they have no idea. High blood pressure, it's when your kidney cannot control your pressure, mm -hmm. you know, the kidney is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So like you just get um, irregular, your pressures just go away, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can, they're, not, they're not balanced. And just a question, did you know you had hypertension did before your kidney failed? Uh, did I know uh, through the checkups that we had before prior to that eh, there were the the, uh, the doctor said you might be you know but that's not like is that the thing they put like this yeah, yeah they, they, the, they measure yeah. Yeah. blood pressure yeah okay so yours was coming a bit high uh, at, that, at that at that time it wasn't it was just irregular okay yeah so you get like I'm good but sometimes it just goes way up okay. and yeah you know Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You get the doctor, you can just uh, give the chain of how all these are married so that Alex can get a proper answer. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, when you look at kidney failure and alcohol, his question is whether alcohol can, can, can worsen or can interfere with kidney failure. Yes, it can. One of the things that alcohol does, if you take too much alcohol, uh, your blood pressure goes high, so you get hypertension. So if you're hypertensive and you take alcohol, your blood pressure is definitely going to get out of control and that worsens kidney failure. It makes it progress faster. That's one way. Another thing is people who take alcohol often will report tomorrow they have got hangover, they are vomiting and all that. Mm -hmm. When you vomit and lose a lot of water, you can get dehydration. That one can worsen your kidney failure. Mm -hmm. Many people who have taken alcohol have forgotten to take their medication. So again, if you take alcohol, you are going to forget taking crucial vital medication mm -hmm. that are protective to your kidneys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but kidney failure being caused by alcohol per se is not common. Like alcohol itself caused kidney failure. It's that it contributes adversely towards kidney health. Mm. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for that. As we try to get that, I'm having an internet problem, so I can't be able to get your SMSs, unfortunately. That's the situation over here. So you can keep using our phone line. Uh, it is right below your screen. Go ahead and use that as we continue. I'd love to ask us, even as we go, I don't want to rush the end of it as we continue to pick questions. I want to give you, David, some time to just look at that camera and encourage someone who's going through kidney disease, uh, whatever it is you have in your heart to share with them, as well as encourage them to follow your page and be a part of the community. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, um, it's been a long journey and um, I really thank God for being with me throughout and um, I thank my support system and my doctor and um, the whole unit yeah, to be specific. Mm. Yeah, so if you walk with me you'll know that I, I, am a, I am a kind guy to be with. If you need help, I always help and direct you where you need to to be directed uh, concerning this kidney disease and everything, I'll just tell you what's up. So um, you can follow my page on Kidney Society Foundation PFI. Uh, we drop a lot of 
educative material there you know we drop a lot of material we usually have events so um it's good that you you just come along even if you don't have that condition just help i know somebody in either either you have been affected directly oh, yeah. or maybe you have a family member who has been affected indirectly so it's good to educate yourself and just know what's going on yeah so keep safe awesome thank you so much uh, mom encourage yes. you've been a great support system mm -hmm. i know there are things that probably you haven't even talked about that you went through that were difficult uh seeing your son unwell and yes. also now seeing him just being able to live out his life so you can highlight and tell people what it takes to actually support and whatever other words of advice you may have yes thank you so much um uh, what i would like to say is uh, for everybody to join together raise your hands and support those people and uh, being a family member where you have a sick one, please always support them uh, money-wise, mentally. Uh, even you drop some groceries what that person needs, it also plays a big role in that person's life because of the medicine. And uh, at times, uh, as we are going through this COVID uh, situation, at times they can travel by Matatu and uh, we know some people who walk long distance because they can't afford to and uh, they are afraid to get into the matatu in case because of their condition so whichever way you can help somebody please do it yes absolutely and also somebody who would like to donate and yes. has thought about it probably they are making that decision this evening yes. uh, and they're somewhere what can you say to them i would like to say as you can see i'm health i don't take any medicine uh, my OP to my son was 20 years ago so don't be afraid don't be afraid actually when you enter that uh, operation room you just sleep he's there you're beside you don't even notice something <laughs> until you wake up you feel an inch here like I would say my my cut is I don't know how many is it's tiny like that mm. you can't even tell that I had an OP wow. no is 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 uh, yeah, wow. as you know, those ladies who get Sicilian, that's maybe a huge one. Mine is a cadot like that. Wow. Yeah, where they, they remove the kidney and uh, I'm good. I'm good and uh, support somebody. You can go through that and, uh, and you will live. Absolutely. And God will bless you more and more. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And as you do that, keep, you can call. I think we have space for one more call as we wrap it up. I just didn't want to rush our guests. You know, when the end of the show comes, you're like, okay, finish in a minute, finish in a minute. No, you guys have taken time to come out. So that's very, very important. Dr. Tari, what do we need to do to keep our kidneys healthy? As you've seen, many people have joined after we highlighted all this. You can highlight it one more time. And also just a reminder, this Thursday, the 11th, is the World Kidney Day. The theme is living well with, well, kidney, with disease. kidney disease. Let's pick this call and then I'll be back for your remarks. Good evening. Thank you for calling Health Check. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Who are we talking to? This is Alex, still Alex from Kikuyu. Yes. So Dr. Ngiga was my doctor at Kenyatta National Hospital. Uh -huh. I'm a daughter to my son, Brian. Uh -huh. Baba Brian, if you can remember, if you can remember me. Uh -huh. So I was asking this, can my son go for workout, like jogging? Okay, okay, we'll yeah. respond to you. Thank you so much. Okay, please respond to that. Can the son go for workout? Yes. Yes, certainly. Like jogging. Yes, he can. He can walk, he can do jogging, he can do all those things that he can do within the limitation of his symptoms. But yes, he can. Yes. What are the limitations of symptoms? Like, for example, if someone has got, uh, say, anemia, you cannot be able to jog because of lack of blood. Because if you have anemia, you have less oxygen. Yes, you cannot be able to jog. But for those people who have gotten kidney transplant, they can do everything and anything. And it's advised that they do that. But exercise is one of the ways in which we can actually keep away from kidney disease. Because exercise also burns the toxins. In yes, it helps. Body. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm. Let's exercise. Let's do. I discovered an app called Seven Minutes. It's actually ah. a seven minute workout. So you do like. 30 seconds of wall seat, 30 seconds of planks, uh, star jumps, whatever they call them, jumping jacks. Is it? Uh, yeah, so okay. download the app, 7 minutes. I don't know who owns it. It's, uh, I, might be, I might be charged for this. <laughs> <laughs> I might pay, I'm sorry. Okay, as we do that, Dr. Ari, um, 
what would be your, your remarks on number one, keeping healthy? You said about workout, other things we can do, and also your take home. Yes, uh, let's make sure that we lead healthy lifestyles. Let's avoid those things that can be injurious to the kidney. Let's avoid the smoking, excessive alcohol, eating junky food, so that we can keep off obesity. For those of us who have diabetes and hypertension, let's ensure that our sugars are well controlled, blood pressure is well controlled, we do exercises. And for those of us who have got relatives or members within the family who have got kidney disease, we should unfortunately remember that we have got a risk, so we should go for screening. Absolutely. Doctor, you can hold your thought, don't lose it. Let's speak Naomi. Our first lady caller. Naomi, good evening. Hello, Naomi. Thank you for calling. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Where are you calling us yeah. from? I'm calling from Nairobi. Yes. I'm asking the doctor yes. how low is the how low is the, how bad is low creatinine? What level? Okay. Did you yeah. get the question? Yes. Okay. We'll respond to you right now. Thank you for calling Health Check. Okay. Okay. Let's respond to her. Um Naomi, I've had this question severally because some people have been worried about low creatinine. Yes. But like I say, I've said uh, in other forums, creatinine is not the poison in the blood. Mm -hmm. It's not the poison in the body. Mm -hmm. Each one of us has their own creatinine. Mm -hmm. Creatinine comes from our body muscles. Mm -hmm. So a person who is big will have high creatinine but is not in kidney failure. Mm -hmm. A person who is very slim will have low creatinine but could be in kidney failure. Mm -hmm. So when you look at creatinine, you need to be very careful when you interpret the number against kidney disease. Okay. So, for example, if you become pregnant, your creatinine shoots down, but it doesn't mean you're sick mm. because creatinine comes from the muscles. Okay. So, raw creatinine is not necessarily a marker of sickness, mm. and it is not something that people should be worried about. But when your creatinine is very, very low, then you should start checking out your, your body, your muscles, whether you're generating creatinine or not. There's something that someone once got me, like a creatinine. Do people sell creatinine for workouts? Not creatinine. Yeah. People sell supplements with creatine. Okay, with creatine. Some, some, yeah. yeah some okay, this one was specifically yes. written creatine. creatine. So you guys are talking yeah. about it, I'm like, yeah. why did this pass? But I, I never used it. <laughs> yeah. Not even for a minute. Yeah. But but now you can understand it has something to do with muscles. 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 Not, yes. yes, absolutely. So I fellow get can that. Build up muscles. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. I think that is the, how we wrap up this particular episode. So much to talk about the kidneys, a small organ, but very, very important in our bodies. We've talked about the biggest one, which is health and how you take care of your nutrition. We've talked about social support that doctor yes. also emphasized on. And we talked about this Thursday, you taking a deliberate effort to learn, to teach, to educate, to talk about kidneys. We, we have a lot of uh, small talk sometimes. People don't, uh, you know, you don't have a conversation. Start asking someone, what do you know about the kidney? True, true you know something about the kidney? Yes. Don't be awkward in, in spaces and get to do that. Another important thing is to support the organization and spaces uh, that come together uh, to bring conversations on kidney. And there's this Facebook group, number one. Yes. It's you can a, say it one more time. The, the uh, Kidney Society Foundation, PFI. What's PFI? Project Funguka Initiative. Oh, Project Funguka. What is Funguka? Onafungukia kwa sababu, um, me being in the entertainment sector, uh, I use a lot of entertainment to uh, teach people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I have poetry that does that. I have rap music. I have acts. You know, there is. Uh, before Corona, there was something we were planning to do in Safaricom. It's called Body Art Scars. Uh -huh. Yeah, a very nice show. Yeah. Yeah. That was so would you show your scars for your surgery? It was meant to be like, uh, I won't explain. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. You'll okay. come for it. I'm yeah. looking forward. And are you inviting us to watch? Are you going to stream the event? What are you doing about the World Kidney Day? Yeah, it to be virtual. Most of it to be virtual okay. because of the corona events. Yeah. We'll have a grand event at the uh, Kempinski. Yeah. But uh, we have encouraged uh, counties to do their own little things out there so that you can penetrate and reach out to the masses as much as we can. Okay. Yes. On our way out, I promise to give you an opportunity to just talk about what you needed on policy, on medication for people who can't afford it. Just highlight that. Oh, um, and, and Dr. will tell us what he's doing about it. As a head of the Reno. Oh, I was, um, for me, like I had uh, two or three issues to highlight here. And this is, we had, um, we had, a, we had an event where he was highlighting it before. And this was to allow cadaveric or living donors yeah, because um, like in, in the States, 
they, they have a donor system, a donor bank, and we don't have that in Kenya, maybe because of the crime, crime rate and all that. Uh, but it would save people like me, you know, because Kenya doesn't allow um, donations from actually, like, in the, in, the, in, in the forum, I have more than 200 messages just replying to people, no, we don't sell kidneys, we don't sell body organs, you know. So I have to, like, come out and uh, tell people, you know, create awareness on this. But what I would request the government is to rush that process of where they can create a system where we can um, be able to have living donors or cadaveric donors, yeah? Uh, number two was the social security for disability. As you can see, um, there are many complaints in the forum of, um, like, they can, they can even create for us schemes for small jobs and like microfinances that you can be able to that do. we can be able to get yeah we can get because uh people who are like on dialysis they can't work to be honest like my friend who has uh he's called simon yeah he has a new uh, peripheral neuropathy his right. nerves are dead he can't work he wants to work but he cannot work you know and he had a uh, he had a kidney he had a kidney issue before you know, so um, how the government can help us uh, create jobs for us, you know, or at least we can, we get jobs that we can work maybe 40 hours, yeah, per week or something. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for raising that. We are just one minute to the show. Dr. Ari, can you just respond to that? Um, there are very many policies that touch on the kidney, but the most important policies that we need to look at are the financing policy, and government is very top on that, looking at NHIF and the universal health coverage. The next will be policies on, on uh, what he's talking about, the transplantation bill. We are really looking forward for that, because once we pass that bill, we are going to unlock a very important impasse, a uh, scenario where people who have got no donors because of hereditary issues, donors who are not well, will have kidneys. Uh, we are saying that in years to in a few years to come, when the bill is through, people who are not treated can donate kidneys to people whom they want to donate, either because when they are alive and when they are not, because we shall have developed a, a legal framework through which we can control that. Okay. But for now, we don't have a robust legal framework that can allow that to happen. Okay. Yes. Thank you for highlighting that. Thank you, thank you for watching Health Check. I want to encourage you to watch this. I want to thank my guests. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you. Thank Welcome you so much, here. David. Oh, he's saying thank you. Oh, hey, he's so thank sweet. You, You're so blessed to have a uh, uh, son. Yes. He totally adores you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. And of course, Dr. Ari, thank you for your thank time you. and all the best with whatever else you need to go do right now yes. as we wrap it up. Yes. Share this video with somebody. Let them know that health check happened. Let them know of the conversation of kidneys. This Thursday, you have a mandate to do. I'll see you tomorrow on Team Worship Wednesday on Hope FM where you listen at late 5 a.m. Yes, I'm back here. So let's do it together. Super excited about uh, that time in the presence of God. And as we leave the show, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. I'd like to send an apology to not be able, uh, for not being able to actually respond to your text today, but we shall, you know, work on it next week. I'll see you next week right here on Hope TV where you look and live. My name is Kerika Giri. Have a good night. <laughs>